everybody, it's Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2019 Ford Edge. Now our Kurt Harness is going to provide us with a four-pole flat trailer connector. That way whenever we're towing a trailer, we're going to have all the required lights to get down the road safely. Like our stop lights, our tail lights, and our turn signals. And the other nice thing about it is, is that a four-pole connector is going to be one of the most common trailer connectors out there and it is going to be adaptable so we can use other ones if you have other ones on your trailer like a five, six, or even a seven way. Now our wiring is designed to stay on the outside of the vehicle. That way it's really easy to access and we can have it to hook up whenever we're hooking up to our trailer. Now it is going to come with a dust cover to help keep all that dirt, debris, and moisture out. But one thing I do want to mention is, is we have ours mounted to this bracket and it's not going to come with the bracket. Uh, you can use your dust cover to just attach it to your hitch here, but I always think it looks a little nicer and it just protects the wires a little bit better because they're going to be securely mounted and not hanging down. Now what I really like about our wiring is that it has a converter box and it's going to take the signal from our edge and transfer it to a working signal for our trailer. But it's also going to make sure that our wiring is protected from any kind of backfeeding. So if there's a problem on your trailer, maybe you have a short circuit or something, it's not going to backfeed into our edge, cause any kind of damage like that. And I know another thing a lot of people worry about is wiring in general. People get a little bit nervous when it comes to the installation. But that's the nice thing about the Curt. There's no cutting or splicing of the factory wires at all. It's a simple T connector that you're just going to plug in line with your tail lights so that it can get the signal out to the trailer, but also out to the tail lights. Now we are going to have to run a wire up to the battery so it can get power for the converter, but it's also going to have a fuse to make sure that that's protected as well. So it's really going to make sure that no matter what happens on either end, we're not going to have to worry about any kind of damage to the system on our edge. But now that we've seen what our wiring looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the installation process together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. To begin our installation, we want to open up our rear hatch on our edge, and we're going to come right to the inside channel here, right next to our tail light. There's a little plastic clip that's covering up the mounting holes and the hardware that's holding it in. So you just want to grab a screwdriver and we can pop it out. Just get your screwdriver worked into the edge, and we can pull that little little plastic panel out and then inside of there will be our screw that's holding it in so you want to use a T25 Torx bit to take it out. Now you want to be careful trying not to drop this screw but we'll pull it out then we can pull our tail light out. Now whenever you go to take it out you don't want to twist it too much because a lot of our tail light actually goes on the side of our edge here so we want to pull straight back as much as we can it is a little bit difficult to kind of get a grab on anything, but you do not want to try to pry on the corner here because it is very thin plastic and we don't want to break it. So if you typically can grab right here and again, just pull straight back because on the back of the taillight we have these pins and again, we don't want to break them. Once we have them out, we can grab our connector here. There's a small tab. I want to push in on that tab can lift straight up, pull the tail light out, we'll move to the other side and repeat that and make sure we put our tail lights where they won't get damaged. Now that we have our tail lights out, we need to get our wiring harness up to the tail light pocket. But if you look, there's really not a whole lot of room between our fascia and the body here. So you want to grab yourself a plastic trim panel tool and if we look along the top here, the outer edge of our fascia is just clipped in by a few clips. So you just want to loosen them up just kind of pull upwards on the fascia or if you need to you can take that plastic trim panel tool kind of come underneath those clips just so they're a little bit loosened up and then right in this section right behind the fascia there's actually a push pin that's holding it in against the body so then you're gonna you can either use your plastic trim panel tool or you can get a trim panel tool like this and come in behind that push pin and work it loose and that'll give us just enough flex so that we can get our fascia pulled away right here at the corner and we can get our wiring up to the taillight pocket here. Now I'm gonna be using the fish wire method to get my harness up to the top here. Now I'm gonna use an airline tube, but you can use just about whatever you have. If you don't have an airline tube, you can use a coat hanger or even a string with something heavy tied to it so it can fall down to the bottom of the bumper here. We'll just pass our fish wire down 
in between the fascia and the body until we can meet up at the bottom of the bumper and get access to it. Just want to make sure that your pull wire is long enough that it will go all the way down. And since we have some appearance panels down here, you may need to reach up, find the wire, and pull it out. But it should come out pretty much right underneath the taillight at the very bottom of the bumper. I'm going to grab my harness, and I'm going to tape the yellow end connector to the end of here, and we can pull it all the way up. Go up, and we have enough room to get them pulled up into the taillight pocket here. We can go ahead and remove our pull wire and the tape. Just line the connectors up, plug it in. We should be able to just kind of tuck the wire away and then be able to get this connector in place and get the taillight in place. It's just, it's a very tight fit, so you may have to move your connector and wires around to get it back in. We'll just take our connector, plug it in, make sure it locks in place, give it a quick tug. And again, we're gonna have to find a way to tuck our wiring out of the way to make sure that we can actually get everything in. So I'm just gonna put that clip back in, make sure that it's not gonna interfere. And I'm gonna tuck my connector probably right in between the body here next to the fascia. It might fit if we put it just like this. But again, we just kind of have to test to see if it's going to be in the way. But now that we know it fits, we can go ahead and put that screw back in. And this side, on this taillight at least, will be connected. So now we want to take our green wire with the T-connector on it. And we want to route this over to the passenger side. We're going to use that same method to get the wire up and connect it. You do just want to be very mindful of your exhaust as you're passing it over because we don't want to have anything too hot or anything that potentially may damage the wire. So as I route this over, I'm actually going to go over the top of the bumper beam right here and run it all the way across. And to help me get that over to the other side, I'm going to use an airline tube again and use that as my pull wire. So I'll get it started by going over the frame making sure I clear everything, get it up as high as I can. And then I'm gonna feed my airline tube until I can get access on the passenger side. We we'll just tape our connector to our pull wire. We're gonna pull all that slack through and then pull it up to the top. Now that we have most of the slack through, you can either run your airline tube down from the top, or if you have a long enough one, you're already down here, just watch the exhaust, but you can run your wire up, and then go back up top and pull that slack through. And on this side, you do wanna make sure you pull all the slack up, because we don't want our wiring to fall down and land on the exhaust. We're gonna take our tape off, and we're gonna hook it directly to our taillight, just like the other side, and then we can reinstall our taillight back here on the passenger side. I just took a couple zip ties and I attached them together, and I actually went around this plastic piece. That way it'll have just a little bit of tension on it, and pull all the slack up, and we can cinch it down, and we'll have a little bit of tension keeping it from falling down. We can plug our connector in, tuck all our excess wire Kind of down in between the body. And we can put our taillight back in place. So you should have your converter box and a few other wires on the driver's side of your edge still. We want to pay attention to our black wire first. This is going to be our power wire. It needs to run up to the battery. Now obviously this length of wire is not going to reach. And that's why they provide you with a length of 12 gauge wire. So we wanna grab the buck connector out of our kit, slide it over the end of our stripped wire, and then crimp it in place. We can grab the length of wire, and strip back a little bit of the insulation, and we'll crimp it into our buck connector. And we wanna bring our attention to the converter box. We need to mount this somewhere securely where it's not gonna be rattling around, 
and it's going to be somewhat protected from the road spray. Now we do have this panel right here, so it should be protected if we put it up kind of high. Now we do have an eyelet on our converter box, but they also give you a foam sticky pad that you can stick it to a nice flat surface. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean off the converter box and the surface, and then we'll stick it somewhere in this area so we can make sure it's nice and protected. Next, we can start with our white wire that has a ring terminal. This is gonna be our ground. Now you can see we have plenty of slack here, so I'm actually gonna route this a little bit away from the exhaust. We're just gonna find a flat piece of sheet metal that we can take the self-tapping screw and we can secure it down. I am gonna route it behind this panel here and then just come forward to that panel and grab our wire, pull it out. I'm actually gonna go up so it'll be nice and protected underneath this panel here. And I'm gonna go up and I'm actually gonna attach and I'm gonna stretch my wire out so I don't have to worry about that slack coming down. And I'm gonna attach it right in the center right in front of our muffler, right about where the subframe is. So we should have two wires left, one with our four pole connector and our power wire. Our four pole connector, you just wanna to route towards the center by your hitch. We have a four pole mounting bracket so we can have a nice clean look and it'll keep our wiring secure. But we're gonna go ahead and route that after we get our power wire up to the battery. And when you are running your wire, you just want to stay away from any major heat sources like the exhaust, any moving parts like the steering or suspension, and just make sure you use as many zip ties as you feel comfortable and that your wire is secure. But I'm going to run this up to the battery and then I'll show you the path that I took. So I started running my wire towards the front, went behind this appearance panel, and I actually sent my wire over the rear subframe and axle, went over all of these braces coming down underneath these panels. You can actually see the wire right here went around my fuel tank. Then we actually have this big panel that's gonna have a lot of protection for our wire. So I just followed it all the way down until it comes out of the end of the panel. Now, I already went ahead and dropped my airline tube down as my pull wire and went ahead and attached the excess wire. So now we can go up top and pull it up. But again, as you're routing your airline tube, you wanna watch because our exhaust is right here. So if you can, try to use the lines or anything that's over towards this side to try to keep your wire away from the exhaust as you pull it up. I have my airline tube pretty close to the firewall. Fortunately, the battery's right there. But once you get your wire up, you do wanna pull all the slack up. And it's not a bad idea to double check underneath, make sure there's not a wad of wire because we don't want it to get caught on something and rip out as we're driving down the road. It's also not a bad idea to anchor it to something. So I'm probably gonna use a zip tie to tie it right to this wire loom right here. And we don't have to worry about the wire falling down, landing on the exhaust, or again, catching on anything while we're driving. So we're gonna grab our fuse holder now. Now it's gonna have one continuous loop of wire. So you just wanna make sure you cut it half and we're going to strip back both ends. On one end you're going to take the ring terminal that comes in your kit and we'll crimp it down. Then the other open end we're going to grab another yellow buck connector out of our kit and crimp it in place. We can come back to our power wire now. And since we're so close to the battery, we can actually just trim off just very slightly ahead of it so we have some wire to work with and we can get rid of the excess. We'll go ahead and strip back the end of our wire. And this is going to go right into the other end of that buck connector. Now we want to take off the nut that's on the positive post of our battery. So I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to loosen it up. take our ring terminal. You do want to make sure your fuse is not in the fuse holder at this point. We'll slide our ring terminal over. We can reinstall and tighten down the nut. Then we can put the fuse in. We can make sure that our circuits are working properly. And once we do that, it'd be a good time to clean up any excess wires. Make sure you mount your four pole and just tidy everything up for a clean look.
And I'm going to go ahead and plug in my four pole tester. I'm going to run through the lights and verify that they're all working properly. So if I turn on my headlights, we can see that our taillight function is working. Our left turn signal, our right turn signal, our brakes, and the brakes in both turn signals. All we have left to do now is hook up to our trailer and hit the road. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com, and that'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2019 Ford Edge.